And that's the learning process. This is where you learn safely. Try something. If it doesn't work, try to figure out why. So that when you hit the streets doing it in real life, you don't have that issue. Or that if it happens, you know how to go through and fix it. Welcome, everyone, to the Tech Guide Podcast, where we give actual advice to those wanting to break into tech or are looking for their next gig. We have Dr. Joey Hain from Clayton State University on the podcast today to talk about digital marketing, social media, and selling for undergraduates, and how to set yourself up for success after college. I am super excited for this episode, so thank you so much for being here, Dr. Joey. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and look forward to our chat today. Yes, it's going to be awesome. Let's give a little bit more context. So the first people tune in and you're going to have students listening to this or you're going to have other people listening to this, but let's give a little bit more groundwork fra- uh, framework about who you are. Can you share a little bit more about your background and what you teach at uh, Clayton State University? Sure, I'll be glad to. Uh, my background's probably different from a lot of academics in that I spent more years than I'm going to admit to in the business world. So I come from industry and I have a very broad background. Um, my undergraduate is in accounting, my MBA is in finance, and then my doctorate is in marketing. And over the years, um, I've been a financial analyst and after that, I uh, and a, a manager for a um, tech team that back in the very early days of the internet, and um, then retired to be a mom. And I joined my husband and our family business. We had a mortgage company for about 20 years. And after he passed, I joined a um, very large, one of the largest national banks we have and was in commission sales for another dozen years. So did 100% commission sales, decided that I was going to not ever quit work. (laughs) So I decided when I retired that I would um, try to be a college professor. So I went back to school while I was working full time on commission sales and obtained my doctorate in marketing. And I'm very fortunate in that Clayton State um, asked me to come on board and join them and um So that's really my industry uh, background and coming into digital marketing. So I started out teaching digital marketing with, um, I had a friend that was teaching at another university and needed some support. And she said, I have more students than I can handle. I will teach you how to teach digital marketing if you will come help me. And so I did that for a couple of years uh, remotely online here in Atlanta for a university out of state and have just not looked back since then. I absolutely love it. Can we highlight uh, a little bit more of the courses that you're teaching? Like, what are the specific courses? Can you give us like a very high level? Because then we're going to really dive deep into setting up undergraduate students for success after college. So I teach both graduate and non and undergraduate students. At an undergraduate level, I teach um, an introduction to digital marketing class. I teach an advanced digital marketing class and then a social media marketing class. And those are three courses that allow you to obtain the digital marketing concentration in marketing. So we have a marketing digital marketing degree. And then additionally, undergraduate, I teach professional selling. And periodically, I'll um, teach principles of marketing. The graduate level courses that I teach are, again, looking at that same process with digital marketing. It's an introductory to digital marketing or digital marketing fundamentals, digital marketing strategy, and then social media strategy. I love it. You're giving a very good baseline because now we're going to dive into... Let's talk to like the juniors and seniors, the undergrads that are here interested in digital marketing. What should they be considering that junior and senior year of college to set them up for success in the digital marketing field once they do graduate then? I think one of the key points that I like to um, chat about in digital marketing is that most people that want to study it really don't understand the breadth of digital marketing. And so the very first thing that I do in my very first class of digital marketing is create a roadmap and have them look at all the things that you have to do to be a successful digital marketer or to at least 
to be aware of because most digital marketers work on a team and it's important to know what the other team members are doing. Mm -hmm. So you have to have basic foundations for that digital marketing journey. And the first thing that the students do is go, I had no idea. They think social media, I want to be an influencer, I want to do affiliate marketing. Yeah. But what are the foundations that you have to have in place to be successful in that? So to be aware that there's so much more, um, and even if you're working in it, you tend to work in your area of expertise, but what else is out there to, that you need to know to be successful? I love that. What are those, I want to speak specifically, there's a lot. People want to do that in influencer, they want to do affiliate marketing, they want to do like a whole lot of stuff. But what's some of those like foundational things that someone should know about digital marketing? Is it the SEO? Is it content? Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, really, I mean, you have to start out with what are your foundations? What is your product? Mm. Who is your target market? So going back to very basic principles of what are you trying to market versus I just want to get a hundred thousand viewers on my on my TikTok video. And that's great. There's nothing wrong. And man, to be able to get those types of views are fabulous. But how do you leverage it and take it from there? What's the intent behind the video other than obtaining views? Because the bottom line, and this goes back to my years of being an entrepreneur yeah. and being a salesperson, is if you're not selling a product, you don't have any revenue. And so the goal is, what are you doing? What product are you selling? Who's the target market? And how can you leverage that and make your business successful? That's great. I want to also talk about making people successful through building a personal brand, especially when it's in college. It can be a tough thing to do. You're balancing work. I know you might be a junior, senior in college. You may be like, eh, I kind of have imposter syndrome. Like, why should I be posting stuff on social media, especially on like LinkedIn? Can you talk to people about the importance of building that personal brand in school and how that sets you up for getting a job, landing interviews, and how that really just building that is so important, especially in those years? There's a couple of things just beyond that even that we start as freshmen at our college to help people leverage their skills. And it's, we call it what's a career spine, so that you are learning how to promote yourself. You're developing those base skills that you may not have. So there's a lot of interpersonal skills along that you need. But at the same time, there's things that um, you can do from utilizing technology, which is what you were referring to. So of course, there are things that I'm glad that there weren't cameras when I was in college. Yeah. Um, you know, we all, we've all been to the college parties or whatever, but that doesn't need to be showcased when you're trying to promote yourself online. And so we do teach from, um, from the very beginning. Our, our freshmen that come in, I actually do a, a personal branding class as a, as a guest lecturer in the courses on how do you be successful and now's the time from the day you set foot in college, and even before, I'll, I'll say next weekend that I'm going to do a personal branding class for high schoolers that are coming to look at our college. Wow. So we, we take this very serious, and you want to successfully promote yourself. Go back and look. Is there something out there on the internet? I mean, once it's there, it's hard to get down. But if it's there, take it down. You don't want somebody to see it. When you're using your LinkedIn profile, you want to have a professional headshot. And that doesn't mean you have to necessarily pay to have one done because not everybody has the budget. But look at what a professional headshot looks like and try to do your best to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And then use that headshot across your social media so that when someone's looking for you, they know that uh, if it's Jane Smith or some name, Many people have the same name and they use that branding across and they know that they're able to, but that's the, the same person that they're looking for. And start now with updating your LinkedIn profile, building your connections. So yes, it's, it is never too soon to start. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, for people listening, like one thing that I can speak to experience, I was a senior four years ago, um, three years ago, something like that. I don't know. 
time time goes. Um, but one thing that I did in my senior year that helped me get a ton of interviews and helped me stand out in the process is I started podcasting my senior year actually, and just bringing those to conversations with recruiters posting consistently while I was in college about like what I was doing. That was like a super easy way for me to set myself up for success after school um, and building that personal brand all through podcasting. Recruiters loved it. They ate it up and it was a very easy way for you to actually not easy, but it's a simple way for you to get going, especially when building that personal brand. There's, there's actually some metric and I don't remember the exact number, but it's approximately two thirds or so of every hire that takes place goes to LinkedIn before the hiring. So the companies are looking at LinkedIn before they reach out to have you come in for our conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So you need to be one, making sure you're posting, but like two, as you said, making sure it's optimized and like you're at recruiters are actually able to find you right. um, with all of your keywords and everything. I want to talk about how you can then leverage your LinkedIn to land internships. Um, what types of like internships or part-time roles are most valuable for most valuable for undergraduate students interested in digital marketing? Um, obviously, digital marketing internship, but are there any part-time gigs that people can help can do while they're in college? Talk to us about that. You know, that's a really great question, and I have to tell you that I am very proud of our university and of our College of Business because our College of Business actually has an internship requirement. So mm. if you are one of our graduates, you're going to do an internship while you're, um, while you're getting your degree. And so it's a formal course that you get credit for, and there are certain things that you have to accomplish. We work in conjunction with our Career Services Department, and we offer resume training. Um, when I say resume training, the resume is your each each student's resume is formally reviewed, feedback is provided, and then it's updated. Um, we do interview practice interviews. So we, in fact, in two weeks we have an etiquette luncheon where the students can come in and learn how to have a meal with a prospective employer. Wow! So there's a lot of things that, um, as a student, that. When you get to a university, use the resources, see what's available. If you don't have an interview outfit, I know for our university, you can go to our career services department. You will walk out with a business suit. Wow. And it is provided to you. It's not on loan. There's no charge. So we want to make sure from our university's perspective that you are able to go out and have a successful interview. So having said that, the next thing is, with our career services, we have internship postings that are set up. You can go into our career services and look at postings. Now, not everybody uses those to obtain their internship. Some people are already employed. So we have students um, that work for, in fact, a, a vast majority of our students work full time. Wow. And so it's hard for them to have an internship. So what they will do is go to their company and ask for additional opportunities. And they will internship in a different division of the company they're in. Now let's stop and think about what that does. When you're a manager or you're growing in your career, many times you need to take lateral moves just to obtain that expansion so yeah. that you can take that next level up. We're providing that opportunity at, as an undergraduate. So there's many things that you can do. Now, I will also say that as a faculty member, I have industry contacts that come in to, um, our, our degree is online. So when I say they come into, it'll be much like this. We have online meetings, but they can connect up talk before and after, or go visit with the, um, perhaps the entrepreneur, the business owner, and internships happen in that way also. Yeah. I love the uh, tidbit that you have there about like, sometimes in your career, like you need to make lateral moves to be able to expand your career. Um, that's a tidbit that I really like because everyone's career will not be perfect linear. It's up and down, but sometimes that lateral move is necessary to be able to actually like grow your career. And it sounds like a great opportunity to do that. 
Um, I want to speak um, a little bit more to like Clayton saying like what you guys are doing. Um, you obviously just provided like a ton of good resources. I think it's amazing as you guys are like giving out like suits essentially for interviews. That's of course something that you need to be wearing when it comes to internships as well. But what other like real world experience um, are you guys providing? Talk to us about that in the undergraduate program and then also like your MBA program, how you guys are setting up students for success there. I would just say we have a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Everything, obviously, coming from the background that I have, learning theory and is very important. Learning strategy is very important because I realize the things that I'm teaching today won't exist in three mm-hmm. years. You know, if we're lucky, it'll last three years. So yeah. everybody has to learn the background or the basis. And one of the things that I do is I have my graduate students specifically read a book called Scientific Advertising um, Mm. about Claude Hopkins. The book is over 100 years old. Scientific Advertising, 100 years old. And it's less than 80 pages. And I'll say, why am I having you read this book? Because the aha is this book is the foundation of A-B testing. Interesting. A-B testing is a foundation of digital marketing. How is it delivered? The technology is not the same as it was in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, right? Because at that point, they used to do coupons in newspapers, and they'd pick target markets. They'd go to different cities. Well, we don't need to do that in digital marketing. Our technology will run it. So... Those are some things that we try to do or that I try to bring into the classroom is the foundation is there. We still have to do A-B testing. It's a critical part. But what's it going to look like in the future? I can't tell you. But I can tell you it's been around for 100 years and it is still a foundation. So that's just one of the examples that we have. Now, there's a lot of things, again, that's That's not very exciting when you're a student to have to sit and read an 80-page book, right? (laughs) And and going, why is this professor making me do this until eventually the aha moment comes? But in the meantime, we have, um, we practice what's called high-impact practices. And that's really learning through student engagement. And we use community projects as well as I use simulations in the classrooms. The simulations are called Simternships. A company named Stukent out of Idaho Falls, Idaho, um, has developed an incredible series of realistic industry applicable Simternships. And what a student does with a Simternship is very similar to what they will do once they leave. So we're looking for that hands-on practice with the simternships, as well as having community engagements. We work with nonprofits and help either of eva- that. I have this, this coming spring, we'll uh, be evaluating a uh, marketing campaign to help a nonprofit as they um, promote an event that will be taking mm. place in May. Yeah. Um, and I want to shout out uh, Stu Kent as well, because they were actually on the podcast uh, maybe a month ago, month and a half ago. But yeah, they're providing uh, amazing resources for com- or for students to be able to actually get that in-hands experience. And have, right. have you guys had any, like, what's been the feedback when you guys have been using Stu Kent? Like, yeah, like, talk to us about the experience that they're getting. When I start the simulations or start the community engagement project, um, and I do feedback, I ask questions at the end of every course. And the questions are, um, what did we study that we shouldn't have? What did we not study that we you feel we should have? And Mm, then what was your biggest learning? What was your favorite part of the class? And I will tell you that the simulations, the simternships are hands down the most popular thing in the class. The students, it they're frustrated. They're, yeah. They want to be camp champ. They want to get 100 on every one because yeah. they're high achieving students. And it doesn't happen. But guess what? It doesn't happen in real life either. You have bombed out ads. You have campaigns that don't work. And that's the learning process. This is where you learn safely. Try something. If it doesn't work, try to figure out why. 
so that when you hit the streets doing it in real life, you don't have that issue or that if it happens, you know how to go through and fix it. All right. That's, that's so great. It's so important to get that hands-on experience in college and like finding those internships early on can like really set you up for success once you get to the real world and like land those jobs. Um, and I want to talk about getting to the real world, I guess. Um, I hate to throw out that term, honestly. So I apologize for people listening, but you guys know what I mean. Um, when you do make that transition from school to industry, you guys are providing great resources. Students are learning a lot. But what should recent graduates keep in mind when transitioning from academic projects, sim internships to like real world digital marketing roles? That's a real great question. And I'll, I'll share that one of the comments that I have from hiring managers that I talk to is that students have to have the ability to explain what they've done. Mm. So it's great for us to teach it in a classroom, but students, when you come in, think that everybody does this. And I'm going to tell you they don't. Um, not everybody has a simulation. Not everybody works in community engagement. Not everybody has that internship that you have to have. Yeah. And it's and then along the way, we do what's called micro-credentials as part of the simulations, but we also do industry certifications along the way. Again, they're looking for, um, they're looking at named like SEMrush and HubSpot yeah. that a Google uh, certifications and to sit there and, and not be able to share, oh yes, I did take Google Analytics for, yes, I do have, this um, keyword certification. I not just did it. I didn't just do it in a simulation. I've had the industry certification behind it also. And they don't realize that. So it's being able to, and this is where my professional selling <laughs> background comes in. Yeah. You have to be able to understand what they're looking for and present yourself in a manner that they want to hire you and want you yep. to be part of their team. I think that's like one of the most important skills for someone to learn, no matter if you're going for digital marketing roles or engineering roles, computer science roles, data analytics role is you need to be able to sell yourself. That is like a whole skill set in itself of being able to sell yourself to potential prospects. And that's coming off with like wearing a suit, but also bringing like great energy to the conversation. Like, of course, it's a boat. It's a two way street of fitting in. But like you definitely want to like Bring those good energies, present yourself in a way that like people want to work with you and they want to hire you. Yes, absolutely. It's really good. And this has been a phenomenal podcast um, just throughout. So I'm super thankful for this. Just last question for you, um, kind of going on um, that postgraduate or that postgrad life of getting in the working world. What are some ways that students can succeed after school um, in like digital marketing roles? Talk to us about just beyond the technical skills. Like what are some ways that they can really set themselves apart to kind of have that exponential growth. Well, of course, we want our students to stay in touch with us at the university. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been really, this, we're in the process of having an innovation week um, celebration on campus this week. And we've had two of our students that have gone out into industry, come back and talk about their successes. And that is so motivational. So just remember, as a student, Take advantage of things that are going on on campus so that you can hear. The other part is creating that network. That's the first step. I will tell you the first company my husband and I had, um, we started with a business partner that we met in our MBA program. And that was um, networking. And how did we connect up? So working hard to know how to network, um, it's a tough skill. Yeah. It's easy to be bashful. It's easy to keep your head down, go in, sit down, be quiet, and not say anything, but it's lost opportunity. And when you are in campus, when you're in classes on campus, network. Learn, meet people. Don't just go to class and just sit there and then leave. Take full advantage of, if you have the ability to be on campus, to be um, social, get involved in campus activities. And then again, take that skill out into the business world. Amazing advice throughout. If people are like, oh my gosh, I need to connect with her. I want to learn about Clayton State. Where can they do both of those things at? Well, obviously, just find me at Clayton State, clayton.edu. And um, 
I, you can just Google Joey Hain Clayton State, and I'll pop up. But I do want to share, if I may, just a couple of things that we haven't covered that we've got some really great programs. I mentioned that we have the digital marketing, uh, marketing undergraduate. We have an MBA in digital marketing. The tech guide did rate us as number three online. Mm -hmm. We are an AACSB accredited school, which is um, the top ranking. And um, we have also for undergraduates a four plus one program. So if you're at looking at that junior, senior, you can come in and get your undergraduate and your MBA in five years, uh, taking some of your graduate programs while you're an undergraduate student, and it's all online. So you can be anywhere in the world. And I do have students all over the country, and I do have students that study here and then go home every summer are still taking courses. Love it. A lot of great resources, and that's why you guys were recognized by Tech Guide on that. So you guys are the best. Thank you so much for being here today, and everyone go please get, go reach out. A ton of good insights here today. So yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Best wishes.